Traveling to Jena is like traveling back in time for Lothar Speth, former CDU state premier of Baden-Württemberg. It was nearly 20 years ago that he came here for the first time to take on the greatest challenge of his life. It was actually good that I wasn't fully aware of the situation before I got here. I underestimated the problems. My original plan was to stay no more than three years, but that turned into 12. Achieving the goal of flourishing landscapes took a lot longer than expected. In the spring of 1991, East Germany was no more. Its industry was run down. Most of the state holding companies resembled junkyards. Even the Carl Zeiss Jena company, East Germany's shining example of microelectronics, was on the verge of collapse. 30,000 employees feared for their jobs. Then along came Lothar Speth, a man forced to resign as state premier of Baden-Württemberg in the West after it emerged that he'd allowed his private travel to be paid for by industrial companies. That resignation was a stroke of luck for the then mayor of Jena, Peter Rullinger. Lothar Speth became the new manager of Carl Zeiss Jena, later renamed Jenoptik. We had no reservations whatsoever. And when he and I took a little walk together that day through the city, I saw hope in the people's faces. Speth has come. Speth kept that hope in mind during his first negotiations with the Treuhand Agency, the federal trust set up to privatize East Germany's state companies and finance the restructuring of ailing firms. At the beginning of June, Speth sat down together with the Treuhand managers. He asked for the equivalent of 1.8 billion euros and not one cent less. I had seen many other companies settle for less early on, only to be forced to go back to the Treuhand later and say, please give us more money, we've run out. That might happen three or four times, and each time that company would be sold to someone else, and that was not at all helpful. Speth got his money, and with it, angry remonstration. Because the next thing he did was fire more than 15,000 employees. Like most East German state holding companies, the Carl Zeiss company had too many working in administration and out-of-date technology. For Speth, this massive layoff was the only way to save the business. Nothing in my entire political career troubled me as much as those massive layoffs that I had to push through. Speth showed great sensitivity during that phase. Right from the outset, he concerned himself with social and cultural organizations to make it clear that he also assumed some of the responsibility for those he was unable to keep on board. But most of all, he proved adept at running a business. Using the new funding, he rebuilt the company from the ground up and founded subsidiaries. He also attracted new companies to Jena. Speth transformed a state-owned enterprise into the high-tech company Jena Optik that we know today. It is now one of the world's leaders in laser technology with its medical instruments and world-renowned radar sensors. Speth says these successes were the direct result of successful collaboration. This is the way I always set up our management teams. There are always one person from Western Germany and one from the East. And I said I will not accept anything that has not been signed by both. Now, get used to each other. Today, Jena is the economic driver of the entire region. In 2003, Speth returned to the state of Baden-Württemberg. But he's still warmly received when he comes to visit. The only part of his legacy the people from Jena aren't so keen on, this sculpture by American artist Frank Stella. I really took a beating for this sculpture. And why is that? People said, we've got enough junk, now he's bought more from the US. But it seems all is forgiven. And working together, West and East, a truly successful reunification story was created.